What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Taste Like Music. Jason and Joe here. Album of the week, where we normally review albums selected for us by our patrons. This week, a little different. Uh, it is Joe's selection this week, and he took us back to 1970 for the self-titled album by the Delphonics. You want to tell us why you picked this one? Uh, yes, I do, Jason. Thank you for that lovely introduction. The Delphonics, they're self-titled from 1970. Third album. This one, I first heard about the Delphonics through what should be required listening for every human being on Earth. Jackie Brown's soundtrack. Uh, Quentin Tarantino's great, in my opinion, movie. Uh, killer soundtrack. Cross 110 Street by Wally Womax on there. Starry Letter 23. Street Life by Randy Crawford, Inside My Love by Minnie Ripperton. It is just, it introduced me to a ton of different music. And of course, um, Didn't I Blow Your Mind This Time by the Delphonics is used in the movie. It's on the soundtrack. And it did blow my mind the first time I heard it. Uh, just those French horn little introduction. Just, I was like, wow, what is this? Loved it been listening to that album for a while it, it just missed my top five in 1970 it's a pretty loaded year but it's it was you know in consideration for the top i think it is just a, a marvelous album a little before you know philadelphia sound really didn't come into vogue until like 1972 so this is a little before that 1970 but tom bell stan watson you know they're they're tinkering they're they're creating that lush orchestral sound and i think they really get it right on this album uh, i think the songwriting is really good throughout you know sometimes with those motown albums you had you know some great singles and then some deeper cuts that didn't quite live up i think by 70 that problem had mostly been solved and um you know tom tom bell is a great uh, arranger and everything and he worked with one of the members of the delphonics to write a bunch of these songs so it's not just like an outside you know bunch of people writing songs this is uh the group wrote their own songs or co-wrote them so i think that helps i just love the instrumentation the orchestration you know there's plenty of sitar um there's french horn and flute and horns and strings and it all just comes together to make this great lush sound I think the vocals are great. There's two lead singers. Um, you got William Hart, who does kind of the sensual, more laid back vocals. And Randy Kane, who's got a little higher pitched, a little, you know, um, faster vocal. Uh, I love the way they just kind of weave in and out. They got the nice group vocals all over the place. The drum sound is great. If you remember Silk Sonic from a couple of years ago, that that drum sound is and basically that whole sound is lifted directly, uh, I think, from this album in particular, and definitely the Philly soul sound. But you can really hear it on this album. Just the way everything works together, I think it breathes and flows really well. It's not over cluttered. I love, you know, it almost reminds me of like Pet Sounds a little bit by way of, of Motown as far as the way it sounds. Like you have such a, a depth and variety of instrumentation. Songs are great. Didn't I Blow Your Mind is the leadoff track. And, you know, those, that French horn, when it comes in, it's just instant connection. Uh, you get both of the, the lead vocalists working. And um, it's just a, a, a great, great tune. It was in my top five for 1970 Song of the Year. Uh, it's lush and, and nice. Um, funny Feelings next. It has a really interesting, like, frenzied guitar, which comes in. A really cool layered vocals on this wordless opening salvo. Uh, some nice horns. Uh, when you get right down to it, I love how Hart and Kane, the two lead singers, enunciate the when you get right down to it. Completely different right at the beginning. I think that's really interesting. Uh, and just the drum sounds, that, that rat-a-tat-tat, the fills are excellent. There's a little flute in there, some horns. Uh, there's some slower songs, Maybe I Love You. You know, the, the great vocal interplay works well there. Delphonic's theme is an interesting one. It's mostly wordless, and it comes at the end of side one. But 
the the way it sounds, I mean, you'd think, okay, you know, it's kind of a throwaway filler track, but the sound of it is amazing. This one really reminds me of like a Pet Sounds tune, just the way it's orchestrated and arranged and the, you know, the sitar and the French horn that pops in. It's just awesome. And uh, side two is a little weaker, maybe. I don't know. The, both sides are great. Trying to make a fool of me. Those cascading strings in the intro. Uh, just a, a great hook, a great chorus. Yeah, I mean, I love everything about it. The, the vocal interplay, the wide range of instrumentation, the production, the strings. Tom Bell really just comes comes into his own here. And unfortunately, Randy Kane would leave after this album so this is the only one where you get everything that comes together unfortunately because i mean i could use four or five more of these albums with this sound and uh, you know it's, it's a breezy 30 something minute album doesn't ever stay it's welcome no real filler tracks here i just love it it's, it's five stars for me uh yeah so this was a new one to me i uh, had not heard it i knew some of the songs that um didn't I blow your mind this time I've heard before and maybe when you get down when you get right down to it it was that a hit maybe I feel it's familiar this album had like six I think five or six songs that charted in the in the Billboard Hot 100 yeah so some of it's familiar uh, like you said this is their third album not their debut even though it is self-titled it was on Philly Groove Records I heard a, I I'm not at all an expert on Philly soul. I know the sound and like when I hear it, I know what Philly soul is. Um, and I heard a lot of it. I lived in Philly for three years and the first restaurant that I worked at played Philly soul almost exclusively. So I heard a ton of it. I didn't always know what it was. And so many of the band and like group names have like similar names and it's hard to keep track of a little bit, but uh, I, I dug this record a, a decent amount. I, I found a lot of stuff to enjoy here uh, starting with Didn't I Blow Your Mind this time. I like the sitar on it. I don't, is it real? I don't think it's real sitar. I wouldn't think so. I couldn't find credits for this album anywhere. I don't, maybe they don't exist. I don't know. It's, it's tough with some of these kind of older albums. I think it's, I think it's just guitar with an effect on it. Um, but uh, I like the sitar part. Uh, the French horn at the beginning is really cool. For me, mostly what I'm drawn to on this record, though, is the vocals. I think the vocals are super strong. Um, can't always tell the difference between the singers, but especially the falsetto stuff. If that's Randy Kane, then yeah, I really dig his vocals. And I didn't know that he left after this, so that's a bummer. So kind of makes me less inclined to dig into more Delphonics, but uh, maybe I'll go backwards to the first two records. Uh, you also get the Barry, Man Barry Mann penned uh, when you get right down to it, which I think is great. That's the only track on the record not written by uh, Bell and Hart. Again, I love the falsetto vocals on Baby I Love You. I think those are great. But it's it's weird because as much as like strings and horns are like integral to the sound and like of this record and of Philly Soul in general, rarely was that the thing I paid attention to. It was almost always like the groove drums bass and vocals that i i feel like were driving the songs to me and i don't know how essential really all that extra stuff is like i don't know i dig big arrangements i like a lot of strings i like a lot of horns i like pet sounds i like very like baroque and ornate type of sounds and but with with soul music in particular i don't know it's hard for me to say how much it's like adding to this. It feels like maybe a little uh, too much. It's not like bad. It's not like I wish it wasn't there necessarily. It's just I don't, I think you could take it away and I wouldn't miss it that much. It feels kind to me, Philly Soul feels very much like Motown mixed with like Burt Bacharach. And that was the comparison that I had to kind of in my mind when I was listening to it. And then I was reading about this record and the Delphonics and the Delph Delphonics actually covered two Burt Bacharach tracks on one of their earlier records, uh, which I thought was interesting. And uh, so, so I don't know. Um, I, part of me wishes that there was a little bit more grit and a little more like soul and it wasn't so smooth. 
but at the same time, I, I think the songwriting is really good and the singing is excellent. And I don't know, like, if you take away the strings, does it suddenly feel a little more tough and gritty? I, I, I don't think it necessarily would. I think the, vo the vocals are very smooth. So in that way, I think, you know, they go hand in hand and they work together in that way. I saw someone qu a quote that said Philly Soul was like putting a bow tie on funk, which... Um, it is a good image. I don't hear much funk as much as I hear like classic soul stuff. Overall, I enjoyed the record. Uh, I may go back to it when we deep dive 70, give it another listen. I'm not super high on, on it, though. I don't see it making my top 25. It's like right on the cusp of four stars, maybe, but I think I'm at a very high 3.5 for it. That's harsh. That's brutal. You're one of what i think four people in the discord under four and it's it's all the usual suspects it's the people who don't like soul music so i suppose i'll i'll take it i'm a little disappointed though in your your reaction i don't know how you could not like the strings and the orchestration from tom bell it's it's, it's well i i do i do. think i think but, the strings like if you listen to the strings it's excellent i think the string arrangements are really cool and the horns are cool on their own and but it's also like not what's making the songs good or making the songs better i would i would monstrously disagree I, that's that's what makes it for me i mean i love the singing and everything and the sound the drums but it's the addition of, of that aspect that kind of puts it over the top because it's not, it doesn't sound like any other, you know, soul and an R and B from from Motown or anywhere else you want to go. It's very much only on like the Philly records where you get like this, just you know, like you said, the Baroque ornate stuff that sounds like you know you'd hear on something Brian Wilson did. I, I think mean, it's just to me, it's it's the collision of those like different worlds that makes it uh, really stand out i i mean i there's a lot of probably more philly soul in my musical taste and dna than i even realized because of todd and him just basically emulating all the all the philly soul stuff and like he even covers la la i love you la la means i love you um and like his way of singing is very closely related to all the philly soul stuff um, so I think part of me is drawn to that type of vocal. And I, yeah, for me, it was it was all about the vocals here, and which I thought were great. What's um, what's your go to Philly soul album? If you had well, to choose one, I don't think I have one. This might have been the this potentially is the first Philly soul album I've listened to front to back. And like I know a bunch of songs, but I don't think I've ever done a full album listen. Maybe I have and I'm not thinking of it right at the moment, but. Uh, so I guess it would be this. <laughs> All right. That's something. Well, let us know what you think of the record. Uh, drop it in the comments. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one.